Let's get physical, it's Jordan here back again with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We are in the first week of September, kind of, August 30th until September 3rd, Monday to Friday, retail low print imports and our Q-Mini Spotlight. Now I was running behind this week, very busy with the upcoming start of term, yes I'm a teacher, but yeah, let's jump in and see what we've got this week. Active Life Outdoor Challenge appears to be a Target exclusive in North America. This is a rebranded title actually called Family Trainer, which is what Europe should be getting next week. Apparently this was a Wii game from about 10 years ago, so make what you will of that. I admit when I saw the Japanese release many moons ago, it did look kind of mental, although the Western trailer seems to have sucked the life out of it. Prinny Presents NIS Classics Volume 1 is releasing this week. This is a double pack of games, one of which I'm familiar with, the other I've never heard of. Firstly, Phantom Brave, a fantastic strategy game, obviously rather similar to the Disgaea series. I used to have this on the PS2 and was pretty much overwhelmed by it despite enjoying the visuals and concept. Secondly, there's Soul Nomad, which I'd never heard of, probably because it was a PS2 game released when the PlayStation 3 was on the market. It looks pretty good though. But my question is, where is La Pucelle Tactics? Now that was a great game. I'm hoping Volume 2 is La Pucelle Tactics and Maca Kingdom. That's what I'm guessing anyway. Robotech, Michael Del Polito and Jonathan Rumor, our executive producers, they've chosen this as their mm. pick of the week. Rustler is a love letter to the old style GTA games, but this time set in medieval times. You ain't stealing cars, but you're hijacking horses. It's kind of dumb, but kind of genius at the same time. You have to take part in the grand tournament by doing ever increasingly illegal things. Full of humor and nonsense, it's supposedly pretty good. Although maybe not quite as layered as its inspiration game, at least not when it was in early access. Let's see how it runs on the Switch. Our executive producers God of Resin and Brent McLean, they've chosen this as their pick of the week. Kiwi is a super cute looking cooperative puzzle game as two Kiwis work in a post office. You have to help type and send telegrams in a chaotic way. It looks kind of crazy in the trailer, but I'm sure it makes more sense when you're actually playing it. But be sure to bring along a friend as it seems only suitable for two players. It looks fun and has a Kiwi, so it's an instant win. You can't go wrong with a Kiwi or two. And our executive producers Boombox and Alexander Kato agree with the Kiwi because it's their pick of the week. Kitaria Fables looks like a cute action RPG starring cats. Instant purchase, I think we can all agree. Firstly, Kiwis, and now cats. I mean, publishers really know how to get you to open your wallets these days. They found the key for that. The once peaceful land is under threat. Simple looking combat, accessible classless setups, plenty of looting, gathering, and crafting, and it looks to have some farming elements, so perhaps shares a little bit of DNA with something like Rune Factory, except with cats, which makes it better. Now this is by PQ, but you'll be relieved to know it is being physically released in North America as well as Europe, and there was a mini bonus release on fun stock, but that appears to be sold out by now. Keeping it with a slight farming theme, Monster Harvest looks to be finally getting its release after multiple small delays. Now despite the super generic looking box art, this looks pretty good. A mix of farming and monster collecting action RPG, kinda like almost my dream game, at least in concept. We'll have to see how it actually pans out, but so far, so promising. But just for the love of God, who made this cover art? I mean, people are gonna see this and think it's complete shovelware, or something more related to farming, like, oh well, I don't know, rakeware, watering can, need to work on that one. Anyways, Jcross77776 has chosen this as his pick of the week. Neo Geo Pocket Color Selection Volume 1 is getting its retail release in Europe this week. It's out in Asia already, and Limited Run are doing something with the North American release, not sure how that's getting along, but European dudes, you can get these 10 obscure handheld games on one cartridge, and I am all over this. I think I prefer the Asian yellow cover, but at least this European one isn't censored like the North American one. Yes, apparently Limited Run didn't fancy boobs or guns pointing outwards, but you know, maybe that's an ESRB thing. Big Rumble Boxing Creed Champions. Now, it's not very often that a new boxing game comes along, especially a licensed tie-in to a movie series that hasn't had a movie in three years. But anyways, Rocky fans, take a look at this game featuring 20 iconic characters I can name about... Four. I just hope there's a DLC for Logan Paul because I'm just a massive fan of Logan Paul getting punched in the face. That really makes my day. This is out in the US this week and I think Europe has to wait until next week. 
Doom Slayer's collection probably should get its own code in a box bullshit segment, but I'm sure the Doom guy would show up, rip my heart out of my chest, and then shove it down my throat. So, uh, yeah. Plus, I kind of understand why it has to be. Firstly, you get a cartridge for Doom 2016, and then Doom 1, 2, 3, and 64 as download codes. I mean, yeah, it's crap, but I don't think they could have actually fitted them onto a cartridge anyways. Maybe one day if Nintendo release the Big Beast cartridge. Alright, the Little Prince Dusk was put up for pre-order last week at Limited Run Games. This is a long delayed game. It was supposed to arrive at Halloween last year, but never did. One would guess it may return this Halloween in order to keep the theme. Anyways, it's another Doom clone which we've seen a lot of recently. Not that that's a bad thing. Great fun games. Limited Run's other game this week is Blood Rain Betrayal Fresh Bites. A game interestingly made by WayForward, so obviously it has to be limited run, there's no other option for them these days. It's an upgraded version of a game they made in 2011, when it was probably a little bit more relevant. I guess they want to sell it one more time before the license expires. I don't know, but it looks good, great animation, fun looking gameplay as you'd expect from WayForward. There's a standard edition as well as a collector's edition which has a soundtrack CD, poster, keychain and some other guffage like an ID card and a pen. September 3rd to grab yours and Cartoon Soren, Punky Dooster, Vilos, our executive producers, they've chosen this as their pick of the week. Alright, let's head into the imports. Remember guys, if anything takes your fancy, links are below with our discount code SWITCHWATCHTV for 5% off. Not that there's anything interesting this week, but I always do put some community imports in the description below as well, so don't forget that. Uh, this week though, Family Trainer, releasing in Asian regions. This is the same game as the first game in the video, just under its proper name. It has English. Demon Gaze Extra, an RPG that sadly does not have English. Plus Port Royale 4, which is now in every region it seems. It took a while to get around the globe. Maybe they were actually transporting them by sailboat just to be authentic. Alright, let's delve into the community spotlight now. Not sure what the prize is going to be for this month. I haven't had much time to take a look. And just to let you know, depending on how busy next week is, there may or may not be a spotlight. I'm starting back at work, as you may have seen from my t-shirt. Uh, and I'm really busy. It's always chaotic and tiring, so we'll have to see how it goes. But yes, firstly, Switch by They got in these three games recently, including the Japanese version of Celeste, which I actually hooked them up with. It appears to be sold out in most places, but good old China, they don't know that. Ganek has sent in this photo of some fairly recent games. The Shadowverse game looks rather interesting. Would be great to hear some feedback on it, if you've played it, if it's any good or not. VF sent in this photo have the nice collector's edition of Crypt of the Necro Dancer. We haven't seen that too often, and I'm surprised. It seems like a rather nice collector's piece for a great game. Our executive producer, Cartoon Soren, sent in this photo. When Wonder Boy Dragon's Trap released, I think it amazed a lot of people. Although it's been somewhat eclipsed by uh, the Monster Boy game, which is a real pity since this one is still a really fun remake. Needless Dragon, thanks for using our links and codes on the Blaster Master Trilogy. They showed off some of their collection from A to B. Something's telling me it's going to be a while before we get through them all. Our executive producer Robo texting in this photo of some fine releases. I heard that Xenoblade prices are going up and up in America, which I find weird. I mean, US prices, they don't make sense to me. Canel sent in this photo of some big Nintendo titles they got for a reasonable price. Can't go wrong with any of them. Mr. Valgard got in a triple threat of perhaps my three favorite imports of the year so far. Saga Frontier, Ninja Gaiden, and The Legend of Mana, which today, yes, today, Play Asia finally got back in stock after what, like, over a month of being sold out. So don't miss out. Grab it while you can. Riz sent in this photo of some interesting titles. Under Night in Birth, the uh, something something Escalator is one of the low key fighting games on the Switch. Really good, well, it looks good, but we don't see it a whole lot, probably because of its ridiculous name. Peter Clark got in the new version of Romancing Saga 3, which looks absolutely incredible. Love that Peach and the classic character artwork. 100% worth it if you don't already own the first release. Links are below if you fancy it with our discount code. Yusha sent in this photo of some fun titles, mostly Vita, who did get in Hardcore Mecha, and the Phoenix Wright Double Pack, which is uh, mostly sold out now on PlayAsia. I say Phoenix Wright, it's, uh, I should say Ace Attorney Double Pack, right? Cyan Wisp, many thanks for using our links and codes on Fight Crab. I hope you going to frame it and use it as a centerpiece for your living room. Plus some other great games in there too. Scott Pilgrim took a while for the Big Daddy edition, but at least it's there. KTAT showed off their games, some really big games including 3D All-Stars. So uh, since uh, we don't really have traditional game stores in China, 
Is it still around in stores despite being time limited? I wonder if like Nintendo recalled them all or something. The One showed off four No More Heroes games on the Switch, and if Suda's words are anything to go by, there will be no more games in the series. It's done and dusted. Steven665, many thanks for using our links and codes on the Blaster Master Trilogy. They also got in Speed Limit from Strictly Limited and No More Heroes and Greek. Yo daddy wants to show off the triple mainline games for No More Heroes. I'm hoping for the Japanese double pack to get a normal release. Parsnip Coffee enhanced her collection with a double helping of Shantae and an import exclusive Aria Chronicle. The funny thing is, I asked for a review code for from the publisher for this like aeons ago, like weeks before it came out, and yesterday I finally got a reply saying, sorry, we don't provide advanced copies for press. Like, really? Makara No sent in this photo showing off a double helping of greatness. I heard that Blasphemous is going to get uh, even more free DLC content. Uh, does this mean another incoming edition like the Dead Cells that they keep doing? Thorn, many thanks for using our links and codes on these three. By the way, it's not common knowledge, but the Japanese version of 2064 does have English, but only after you download an update, so it is an option. Scorpio Caesar sent in these games some fine RPGs, as is always the case with Falcom, great old school company. Geese Nuts got in the EDF World Brothers release. A uh, really fun game for me personally, I know Juan had a good time with it too. It does have its issues, but overall, very fun. Lara's got in these games, I actually forgot the Mario Olympics game was on the Switch, they must have timed that really poorly. Valiant Vey got in these games, the Japanese edition of Summer in Mara with the great artwork, plus Killian Dollar Trilogy of No More Heroes among some other fun games, very jealous. Irina sent in this photo of some fine releases including some code in a box bullshit but no discrimination in these parts by what you want except if you have waifu and code then discrimination is validated but she didn't get that some great releases overall i'm joking of course our executive producer brent mcclain sent in this photo including far loan sales i think the artwork for that is spectacular reminds me of the old school metal gear solid artwork love it very artistic all right guys let's have a roundup ashura g YZ, Brave Spartan, Sheng Long, Starvi, Goma, Craig, Rogue Wayne, King Kin, Craig Morgan, Panzer Thief Zero, John Weston, Hyrule Henry, Vast Neon, Kiel. All right, please send me your pictures on Twitter at so what about game. You can DM me or tag me in a post and use the hashtag Let's Get Physical, and I may give you a nice little retweet. Plus, we have an email address switchwatchspotlight at gmail.com, and we have a Discord where you can send your pictures there in the submission section. Discord server link is below. Please send me just one picture per week. I would really, really appreciate that. Remember, there may or may not be a community spotlight next week. We'll have to see. Right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode in your physical. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boom Box, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, J Cross 7776, Elisa, Punkidusa, Michael Del Polito, Cartoon Soren, Jack Severus, Vilos, Robotech and Z. Thank you for your amazing support. Plus you, yes, you watching right now. If you watched all the way through, you are a legend of the highest order. The longer you watch, the more YouTube likes us and shares this series to new people. Helps us grow, right? So if you are one of those people, give me a high five in the comments and I'll give you one back as always. All right, check out some of our other stuff. Here is a playlist of the Let's Get Physical series plus digital bargains and some other stuff we may have made. I can't remember off the top of my head. All right, see you guys over there. Have a good one.